Welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And while well, it's morning in South Africa, but uh, for all of you, know, if there's anybody tuning in from anywhere else in the world, thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, I'm very excited to share with you that, well, this is the first uh, webinar that we're gonna be hosting and there's two more coming. And uh, it is the first year that the Cape that the CWG auction will go live this year, live and online. So because of social distancing, obviously we don't have the luxury of doing events. So we're gonna be hosting these um, online seminars to give people a little bit more background and create a little bit more excitement. Well, my, my name is Samri Smith. I'm a wine journalist and I've joined the Guild to help them and lead them into this uh, campaign going up to the auction. And we're also excited about all everything that's new and if COVID, um, if, if, if something good came out of it, everybody had to put their innovative caps on. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Guild, the CWG Cape Wine Makers Guild has been going strong since 1982, when a bunch of independent winemakers came together and really wanted to hone in on the excellence and, and raising the bar for South African wine. And in 1985, the first auction went live. And ever since then, people from all over the world have been participating in the annual auction and dying to get their hands on these gems that only, that only comes under the hammer once a year. And uh, but what a year it's been. I mean, um, if everything has been turned on its head with COVID and apart from surviving a lockdown, the South African wine industry had to overcome two bans on, on alcohol and uh, making South Africans thirsty for wonderful wines. But thank you to everybody all over the world who supported us and supported us with the Drop Save Life campaign and everybody all over the world just continue drinking South African wine. But without further ado, the auction this year will go will be hosted live on bon at, on Bonham's website on the third of October. So people will have enough time to register, and uh, people can tune in from all over the world and watch the auction live from wherever they are in the comforts of their homes. And that's quite exciting. Um, this year things will be done a little bit differently. The first six wines of everyone that will be on auction this year will be donated in support of Samantha O'Keefe, one of our members who sadly lost her whole farm and house and most of her vineyards in a devastating fire this year. And apart from that, something more that's exciting is that we have also the Vinatec auction this year. This will be a once in a lifetime auction where featuring amazing wines from previous auctions and all the money raised for this will also be used to help members assist those employed by them and those who are dependent on a salary from the wine industry. So a lot of good things that will come out of the auction this year and uh, but don't uh, those of you who've been thinking about and we're going to do a poll soon to just see get an idea of who's joining us online because those of you who are interested in following a career in wine, don't let all this drama of this year um, discourage you because there's a lot of opportunities, even more this year, following all these disasters. So the poll will come on your screen soon. Just tick the box of, that applies best to you that we can get an idea if you're a student, studying winemaking, if you're a winemaker, And then as we go along, and I'm going to introduce our panelists soon, then uh, feel free to send us questions, take part in the conversation. The chat is disabled, but you can do a Q&A and a and we will try and answer all your questions to the best of our ability. Right. So the first topic today is choosing winemaking as a career. People think that it's a lot of, it's very glamorous, but actually you've got to get down and dirty and get your hands dirty. And it's a lot of practicalities involved and you've got to really put your heart in it to want to go and study winemaking. So to put everything in perspective, we've got Duncan Savage. He is one of our active guild members. By the way, the guild membership have now grown to 46 members of which 42 are active members. So we're going to have Duncan giving us a little bit of an idea of what it was like when he studied um, as a student. And uh, with him, we have Kiara. The two of them work together every day. 
And uh, she's a graduated protege and a beautiful story to tell of how she came into wine. And then we have the very famous Lorraine Caldenate. She's a winemaker and a lecturer at Altenburg College. Um, a wealth of knowledge and with a very beautiful story of the relationship between student and, uh, and lecturer. And last but not least, we have Kalti Shanking. Um, she's currently in the protege program. So she can give us a bit more of a real time idea of what it's like. So to give you an idea of what the protege program is about, I mean, this project, um, South Africa has gone through a lot of changes and to be a part of that change and transformation, the NetBank Cape Winemakers Guild Development Trust was formed. And one of the legs that this stands on is the protege program. So this involves bursaries for postgraduate students and final year students. And then the aim is to, to find these protégés and people that really excel and motivate them to enter or to apply for this program. So it's a very interesting program. And, uh, but let's start with Duncan. Duncan, you mentored uh, Kiara. And there's a beautiful synergy between being a mentor and being a protege. But give us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I've got a, Duncan Savage, as you, you've already said, and I've got a little wine business in the, in the heart of Salt River in Cape Town, which is uh, not your normal little place. But um, I mean, I just, I got into wine because I, I just fell in love with the product. You know, I studied other things beforehand and uh, had no idea about it, you know, other than just, you know, being a lighty and wanting to have fun. And, uh, and then, you know, as you get a bit older and you start to taste great wine, you start to realize that there's, there's something amazing about it. And, and once you get hooked, it's, it's fantastic. So obviously, I started my journey, you know, um, going through the whole Elsenberg thing and then getting a job and getting into the career and all of that, you know, into the winemaking side of things, which was fantastic. And, and then, you know, come 2007, I was lucky enough to become like what was my biggest dream when I was at Elsenberg was to become a member of the Cape Winemakers Guild. And, um, and, you know, you get recognized by your peers, which is such an amazing thing. So, so that happened for me in the, in the early 2000s, which was great. And through the Guild, you know, I've been you know, exposed to so many of these guys that were, were like, like heroes to me, you know, as someone who was an aspiring winemaker. So, I mean, I'm just looking at it as someone who was lucky enough to become a member. Obviously, the Protégé program is, is sort of extending that even further than the membership base. But it's quite cool because, you know, we'll do tastings and, and you know, I'm sitting next to, uh, you know, a guy like David Trafford, who, who was like someone I looked up to as a, as a youngster who's now like a mate. And it's, um, mm -hmm. and it's so cool, you know, to be able to phone these oaks anytime um, and, and discuss things. And I think that's what the Guild does is creates a great platform for people to be able to learn. And then when the Protégé program came into, into to, to being, I mean, it just, as I said, it spread that knowledge even further into... To, to, you know, young, aspiring, up-and-coming winemakers who, who have a thirst for knowledge and a, and a, and a passion for the industry. And it's, you know, it's, it's, the, the passion is one thing. I think when people are super young, Lorraine can maybe, you know, highlight this a bit more, but the passion's not always there until you start to get exposed to these great wines. And, you know, once you, you taste something that blows your mind, there's no turning back. And I think that's a thing. So, you know, the Guild is, is allowing people to come into it in a circle almost and be able to taste these incredible wines with people with amazing knowledge and all of that. So, so I was lucky enough to have Kiara come and work for me. She worked for Savage for two years um, as assistant winemaker when she finished the Protégé program, um, which was great. It was, it was new for me because it was a new home in Salt River, a young business. Um, obviously, you know, I'm getting a bit gray and old these days, so it was nice to have some youth into the business, which was good. Um, and then, so she worked for me for a bit, and, and, uh, and now she's, you know, Kiara tell you a bit more about her, her background, but moved on to Brookdale. And I've actually got what a lot of people don't know is there's another a, a, a guy who worked for me uh, for a year in one of his protege years, uh, Banele Vakele, who is now my assistant winemaker at Savage Wine. So, We've had two protégés as assistant winemakers in our short history. And, you know, all of those guys are coming into the setup with a, a pool of knowledge from, you know, all these other guild members that have, have, have welcomed them into their cellars. And it's been amazing. It's been a great experience. I think that's what's so wonderful about the guild. It's that it's been extremely dynamic with these eight guys who probably sat around a table and said, no, we really have to 
um, raised the bar for South African wine. And now if you look at the guild, all these young people that's joined and then all this incredible knowledge that's now passed on like people like Kiara. And Kiara, you didn't come from a wine background per se, but why did wine, why was wine the first thing that came up in your mind as a career and how did you apply for the property program? Um, so as you've mentioned, I didn't actually, I don't come from a wine drinking background. Um, I come from Mitchell's Plain, so there they drink beer, for example, or other hard liquor. Um, so that was, it was quite interesting for me to see, you know, how people were living and what they were doing. And uh, I didn't, I didn't want to live like that, but I was curious about why they were doing things, you know, why? And also in my family, there were also people that suffered. I mean, this is not a very happy story, but it's the truth um, that also suffered from alcohol abuse and things like that. And I was just, I was curious. I was very curious about this thing. And also because my family didn't want me to do it, I wanted to do it even more. So <laughs> I was young, you know, and a bit rebellious at, at that time. Um, yeah, and I was just, I was interested in, in winemaking. Yeah, and then I, <laughs> I ended up at Alsenburg where I was taught by Lorraine. Yay, thank you. Um, yes, and then I was approached by Magda, and she is the representative of the Cape Winemakers Guild Protégé Program, and she came to talk to us about the program and about the bursary. Um, and I applied for the bursary, and I was successful. And then thereafter, Lorraine also came and spoke to me about joining the Protégé Program um, and applying, at least, for the program which I did, and then I was successful, and I worked for some amazing people. I worked for David Nivelt, uh, Charles Hopkins, and Carl van der Merwe, and I just met so many amazing winemakers. Uh, when you join the Guild, it's a bit like, oh, not join, but join the Protégé program. Um, it's a bit, it was like seeing rock stars, you know, all these people that you admire and you want to work with, and I remember we visited Cape Point when I was studying at Altenburg and I, that's where I actually met Duncan for the first time. And it's actually, it's just so amazing how things have come kind of, not full circle, but it's kind of been a circle. You know, I met him when I was studying and then I ended up working with him and now we work together as well. So it's just, it's amazing. But just to that's come right. in, yes, Phil sure. tells me all the time that David Nivot is your favorite by far. <laughs> But that's the beauty about winemaking. It kind of just becomes part of your story. And thank you for sharing that, Tiara. And uh, um, what what did you learn from, from Duncan, being his protégé? Oh, my word. Um, <laughs> where do I start? That's the influence of you as a young winemaker. Because, I mean, you've already made your first wine at the day. So yes. welcome back. If you look at all the protégés, I mean, there's 10 people currently in the program and 16 that's gone already through the program is either in holding a winemaking position or they've started their own brands. So this protégé program obviously empowers young people to go out and find jobs with all the practical skills, the confidence to go and do this. Yes. And you're a perfect example of that. Oh, thank you. Next to you. Um, well, I'll tell you what I haven't learned from Duncan, and that is to surf. He hasn't taken, we haven't gone surfing yet. Um, but <laughs> what I've learned from him is that, you know, precision winemaking, vineyards, soils, that is where wine is made. And he places so much emphasis on that. Um, so, I mean, it's really super, super important. He's super passionate about vineyards, super passionate about winemaking in general, but mostly just about working in your vineyards. That is very important. <laughs> very important. So, yeah. The that. check is in the mail. Laura, <laughs> <laughs> um, now that you've been through the process, what is your advice to young people that want to go and study? Because, I mean, you don't always, if you go and study winemaking, today, I mean, this is what this pandemic has uh, taught us is that you have to wear different caps. Being able to put this wonderful natural product in a bottle, but then the hard work is like selling it, marketing it. So do you think you will go into different directions and what can you advise young people that want to go and study winemaking or going to a wine-related career? 
Well, my advice would be don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Get involved in everything. They, you know, if you need to clean the floor, be the best floor cleaner. If you need to make the blend, make up the best blend, pour it the best way. Just do whatever you can do. Do the best at that. Be the best. Even if it is cleaning the floor or pouring something or going to fetch something or do whatever. Be the best at whatever you are doing. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Listen and learn as much as you can. Yes. Wonderful. In everything. Interestingly enough, both of interestingly enough, both of you went through Altenburg College. Now we know that this protege program opens up bursary for to go to either Altenburg or to go to Stellenbosch University. And both of you have been through Altenburg and we've got Lorraine Feldena. I mean, if anybody have any doubt about whether they want to go full time into winemaking, she's the one that will of that will convince you. I mean, she uh, they've just planted vines in the Karoo when nobody thought you could plant vines. So, Lorraine, just quickly tell us if people come and study winemaking, what can they expect studying full time? Sam, um, I like that question because it sounds pretty straightforward, but I don't think the expectations are always that straightforward. I think what an aspiring student expects and what I expect and Kiara would probably be able to say are two vastly different things. Um, I think in, when, when a student comes to study winemaking, they expect what's listed in the prospectus, right? They want to know the technical know-how of how to make wine, um, you know, the different styles, international wines, and that's right, that is what we are going to teach them. But I think my opinion is that this is rather limited. Um, having just this in life will leave you um, dissatisfied, bored, disconnected from an industry that's got a real heartbeat. And I expect them to tap into the rhythm I've lost you. I've lost you. I'm back. I'm yeah. back. Gotcha. <laughs> so what I am, uh, what I'm expecting from the students uh, that's studying winemaking is to tap into this rhythm of winemaking that is specific to each vintage, and each team that you work with has got a specific heartbeat. So the student, I expect quite a lot of them. I expect them to understand that time during harvest is an absolutely irrelevant concept. I often, I don't, I don't know if you remember Kiara, but I asked you guys to take off your watch and not to focus yes. only on the seconds and the minutes and the hours of the day, but to focus on the people that you work with. I expect them to be on time. I, I expect them to, to take full responsibility for the wines that they will be making. I expect them to trust each other. I expect them to involve their parents because what 21 year olds are going to involve their parents when they are studying. But in this industry, that's a good place to start because wine is all about involvement. It's about putting a glass of wine at a dinner table with engineers and doctors and plumbers and talking about the wine and sharing it. So involvement and communication is key. Um, I also teach them, I also expect of them to have a respect for this industry and to have a respect for alcohol and to respect themselves. But most of all, Sam, I expect them to pay it forward. Very important. And that kind of brings me to somebody I have a question. And they were saying we put a lot of emphasis on winemaking, but we're actually coming to that. And again, I've had this discussion yesterday about teaching these students a relationship with the soil. So uh, there's a lot of more emphasis needs to be put on people that want to, that's choosing viticulture as a career. And I mean, there's been so many changes in that, and, and there's been so much improvement, not only in South Africa, but all over the world. And um, really understanding the relationship to the soil and, and the vines. And but how do you teach something that's so realistic to get them excited to go, say, in the direction of viticulture? It's very easy. You just take them to the soil. Um, we don't teach about the soils and that holistic approach in the, in the classroom. Um, I, maybe we can speak about it in a moment, but we just came back from my team with my team in the, in the very remote part of the Karua where we planted Grenache in the, in the driest conditions of South Africa. We get 20 millimeters of rainfall. And I took them there with Rosa Kriya. She was with us for, for a few days too, as they 
consultant, not my consultant, just to help them. How do we, so, so you, to answer your question, I take them to those areas where we work in the land. Um, I think this culture of understanding and respecting the soil where, where what we consume, um, to have a respect for what we consume will take time. I think it's embedded in a culture and the European culture and the South African culture are vastly different. So it will take time. I think um, we have the ability to witness the beautiful annual cycle of a vine that's growing. And, and my job, I believe, is just to tap into those rhythms of those annual cycles and to show the students what is it like in spring and winter and summer and to be willing, that's the thing, and to be willing to do the backbreaking work that is expected to be done in a vineyard. And, and Duncan knows that and Kiara also because they've done a lot of vineyard work. And I think it's just raising more, being more aware and being more conscious and COVID really helped us to have a better understanding and a better connection with the stuff that we consume, whether it's food or wine. Um, how do I teach that? I don't reinvent the wheel. I work with passionate individuals who are expert in the fields. Um, if it's Swartland, I'm, I will work with, for example, Andrea Molyneux, who's the chairperson of the Cape Winemakers Guild. I know she's listening also. I would work, if it's biodynamics, I'll work with Johan Reineke. If it's development of a vineyard, I'll work with Ruessa. Um, just two months ago, I had an email from Kathy Van Sale, where she sent me an email saying, how can I pay it forward for the students? You know a little bit what I know about wine. How can you use this? I'm making it available for you. Use it however way you want. I said, Kathy, why don't you present me a tasting for the students and we'll open it on the internet about the wines of Spain. She said, you know what, I'm actually quite busy with Plata at the moment, but how about I put you in contact with Sarah Jane Evans from the UK and, and she did the most amazing lecture. So that for me is tapping into the network of the wine industry and just giving the kids, the students opportunities. So far there's been, thank you Lorraine, so far there's been 24 protégés through the program and you have had the opportunity to work with them. And I think a lot of people must realize that to get into the program, it, it's all about merit. You really have to work hard and to prove that, you know, this is something that you, your heart really desire. Um, your experience, do you, people walk out of there equipped to go and do their own thing? Or do you think they are still a bit scared um, having to find their way? How did you experience the protégés that's graduated and that's been in your classes? I think, Sam, it's different for every person. We, we come from such vastly different backgrounds and each individual is going to experience that differently. What I do think, and Kiara can, can confirm this, is that the, guild, the Guild's Protégé program provides opportunities to develop two things, your personal life and to gain a better understanding of the, the knowledge on wine. This helps you to solidify your identity, which mm. provides you with confidence. Confidence, because the world of wine can be very intimidating. I had a dinner last night where people said, oh yeah, but I don't want to speak up because wine's so intimidating. No, because the moment that you gain confidence to speak with authority, um, that becomes less intimidating. And that is the opportunity that I think I provided Alcimac, but also something like a project like a protege program. Um, we are teaching young winemakers, youngsters, like Yara five, six, seven years ago, to speak up for themselves um, in an environment where they feel it's okay. It's okay with an audience of experienced winemakers listening to me and validating my opinion. We've got a, we've got a question for you, Lorraine. Um, what is the most challenging thing that you've had to experience in the industry. Um, that can be interpreted or answered in different ways. And I would think also if you've seen how far the industry has grown, I mean, there's been a lot of challenges, but we, we are quite resourceful and, and, and South Africans kind of overcome adversity. So in your opinion, what's been a challenge for you as a winemaker, maybe as a woman as well, but somebody who is in this wine community? Um, mostly the government. <laughs> what is that? No, I'm kidding. But the, <laughs> no, you're not. Um, the biggest thing. <laughs> I shouldn't bite the hand that feeds me. I'm kidding. I'm just joking. And even that, even even the 
even it is a challenging environment working for the government, but I think this is part of the success story that even with these challenges, we are getting things right. And it's because we want to get it right. We are finding ways to make things happen. We're not waiting for someone else to do the work. Um, uh, Sam, the biggest challenge for me is I want the university and also work to work better together. And, and I'm before I, uh, bef before I, leave this world i'm going to make a difference in the university students as well because um they enter the same wine industry once they are finished with their degrees and they deserve the same opportunities um that is that is that is my biggest challenge i studied at the university and i want to give them a better future as well um i want to and i think they need more people that believes in them and and that help that will help them grow this is one industry. There's no Alsenberg and university. It's one wine industry. When we, when our students go and work overseas, we go as we, we leave as a South African. We don't leave as an Alsenberg or Stadamore. So, so I, next week, Tuesday, and you are involved with that tasting. I'm inviting 10 students from only Stadamore University that has just finished graduating um, at my house. And this, in this room, we'll be sitting and we'll be, Tasting, I said, pick a topic. So next week we are tasting through Piedmonte in Italy and we're going to have a brilliant discussion. And that is the start of, of connecting this industry and making it closer together. I'm tired of, of having an Alsenberg and Stellenbosch. We are in the same boat. But you know, I think everybody on this panel can vouch that the South African wine industry and communities, if Black family is quite close knit. And we, you can pick up the phone and somebody can answer your wine question for you. You don't have to go and Google it. And we've all traveled quite intensively, especially looking at wine all over the world. And we're really living in this like lush, beautiful wine industry that's got so much potential. And we really have to sit up and be ambassadors for this industry. Um, and I've got a question for myself, asking where they can get somebody that mentors them as a wine writer. Well, you're more than welcome to come to me. I think there's so many, there's so many stories to be told about our wine industry and how far we've come. And Kelsey, you are currently in the program. Lorraine, I'll get back to you in a second. I've got some, another question for you. But Kelsey, you're currently in the program and you also had to go through the whole process of applying for this program. And the you said you're the first, you will be the first generation of winemaker in your family, but you've got a very interesting cultural background from roots in China to Namibia to Germany. So I can just imagine the kind of wine that you'll come up with. But <laughs> tell us how you, how you decided to, to go study winemaking and, um, um, and then your experience thus far in the program. Um, well, yeah, you are right. I've got quite a diverse uh, family background. My father's side is, uh, my grandfather was Chinese and he married a South African lady. And then my mom is completely Namibian um, with her father being German. So we're all over the place, um, but also no strangers to farming. Uh, my great grandfathers, they farmed, but I will be the first winemaker in my family or suppose I am pretty much on my way already. Um, but for me, like I said, winemaking, um, not in my family, I'll be the first in, in my family to do it. I was actually in Stellenbosch enrolled to um, study human life sciences in my first year. I never really thought about wine as a career. I never really knew that I could study wine as a career in the schools where I came from um, here in Cape Town. It was kind of like doctor, lawyer, accountant, what else can you do? Um, so just before I enrolled in Stellenbosch, my mom took me to visit the university and I remember we walked past the Enology building, the JH Nietlum, and um, she just pointed to it and she was like, that students in there, they study wine and they, they make wine in there and it just blew my mind. I just couldn't believe it. I had no idea. Um, and then it took maybe a few months for me to just immerse myself in the wine culture in Stellenbosch and I was so blown away that I didn't even finish my first semester of human life science. I was like, oh, I'm talking to the faculty head and I'm changing my degree. And I think it's been probably the best decision I've ever made for myself. I fell so organically into my faculty and now into the industry. And I love every part of it, every minute of it. Um, 
and I was welcomed uh, with open arms by my classmates who are now some of my closest friends. So overall, it was just, like I said, the best, best decision I could have made. Um, and also the Prodigy program, um, similar to Kiara, I was um, approached by Makhda. She also came to speak to us at the university. And I was approached to apply for the bursary in my third year, which I did. And then um, also in my fourth year to apply for the Prodigy program. Um, which I was quite nervous for because it's quite an extensive um, interview process. You go for an interview with the trust members. Um, you do like a wine tasting screening with uh, Louis, who's the chair of the program, and Makhda. So very nervous, very nerve wracking as a student, as you can imagine. Um, but uh, it was at the um, auction, pre-auction tasting, I think I was pouring um, I was helping out as a student pouring and Makhda just came behind me and she said, can I tell you something? I was like, yeah, what? And she said, no, you're on the program. And okay. it's just been bliss from there. Um, yeah, my experience so far has been great. I worked last year, my first year with Louis, uh, Louis Stradom at Ernie Else. Um, there I learned all about cabs, Bordeaux blends, Shirazes, um, red wines, extraction. And this year I'm with Charles Hopkins at the Um Kiara can also vouch for Charles has been a great mentor. Um, he, we're busy here with some cool climate wines. Um, I also feel like I learned a lot here at the in terms of regions because um, of all the different parts of, of our Cape wines that we get our grapes from and also um, Charles's winemaking styles, Louis's winemaking styles. You learn something different from all the different winemakers that you are with and you take something with you from each year. Um, I also had the opportunity actually to do my university uh, internship with Bulle Gerber, who um, is also on the on the Cape Winemakers Guild. He's also a fantastic mentor, and um, I'll always consider him someone that I can phone and ask uh, anything about wine or um, any advice. Um, yeah, so I think the Protégé program for me has been what I made of it. Um, the opportunities have just opened up in front of me, um, but I do think um, it is what you put into it and um, the more you show your passion and your enthusiasm um, to the winemakers you're working with and the mentors you have and to the industry, the more you'll get out of it. Um, and being invited to the Cape Winemakers Guild events and the international tastings, tasting some international wines, I would otherwise not get my hands on probably ever in this uh, <laughs> this time of my life. Um, and also our life skills and our leadership skills trainings, they just add so much more to us and it just sets us off into the industry as more well-rounded um, winemakers who can give back a lot more. Um, yeah, so I think this program has been phenomenal for me and I'm not actually sure where I would be currently in my career in the industry if I wasn't on the program. Oh, you're certainly a wonderful ambassador, but how, how blessed to be able to have access to all these wonderful mentors and people that helps you shape where you want to go. And interesting, if you look at your other classmates, the percentage, who do you think will go become winemakers, who will become viticulturists, and who will go maybe somewhere along the value chain of going to sales and marketing? Was there enough of a diverse group? It's actually quite funny you asked that. So I think we were a graduating group of about 30. Um, we were very equally distributed, male and female, which I love. Um, and yeah, there's actually some, some of the students after our university internship, they came back to university in the second semester after harvest and said, nope, not for me. Um, I'm not going to be a winemaker, but I'd really love to be a SOM. Or I had um, one of my classmates that said, I'm not spending another day in the salad, but um, he started his own business where he's creating cooling systems for tanks. And it's just his passion. It's just what he wanted to do. Um, and I just feel that they, like, even though we all went through the internship process, through our degree, um, not all of us came out on the other end wanting to be winemakers but they found what they wanted to do in the industry still um, through still going through, uh, you know, studying, studying winemaking. Um, there's a few, there's a few classmates of mine that's into viticulture. One of my classmates is Lucretia. She's also on the program as a viticulture protege. 
Um, and yeah, I, I can I can think of a few that was into the viticulture side. I wish there were more. Um, I definitely think that it's a career that needs to be pursued more by us youngsters and especially us females. Um, but yeah, it's uh, what you can do with with your winemaking degree or you know just being in the, in the industry is much more than just being a winemaker. Um, and even as a winemaker, you are part of so much. I feel depending on the size of your winery, I think. Um, you can be involved in many parts of the value chain, um, you know, from suppliers, producers, retailers, you're the marketer, you're the brand ambassador, ambassador, you know, it can be so many things as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, like the relationship to the soil is so important and to really understand that provenance and where it comes from, putting it into the bottle and then, you know, wine might be a social lubricant, but it's got, it's got this incredible depth of, of culture and and everyone has got soul. And I can see the way you speak and Lorraine speak and Kiara and Duncan speak that you guys get that. And I think that is part of the essence that we need to teach people who's interested in wine or who's new to wine drinking and, and know and understand that there's so much more to that. And uh, Duncan, just I've got a question for you. Somebody wants to know, now if you look at this whole circle and all of you making this full circle from students to mentors to winemakers somebody who wants to alicia wants to know how do you go from or francia wants to know how do you go from winemaker to brand owner is that quite a daunting step or is that was that like a natural evolution for you yeah look i don't know it's, it's different strokes for different folks it's like it's it's not just the wine industry it's any industry you know you get people who are entrepreneurial and ambitious and others that maybe want to, you know, be part of a, a bigger establishment, you know? So to get into the wine industry, you don't need to necessarily be on your own and have your own brand. It, there's always that desire because it's such an emotional industry. You know, we become so emotional over parcels of land, wines, um, and, and, and there's always this desire to have your name or your own label on a bottle, but not everyone will be able to see that through. So it's, you know, it's like any industry. You have to have all elements of that industry and people at all levels and they have to do it. I, I just, it, it was a dream of mine from day one. I was going to do it come hell or high water. And if I crashed and burned doing it, then I crashed and burned doing it. But fortunately, we haven't yet. It's still a long journey ahead. So hopefully we won't. But um, it's awesome. It's, it's super rewarding. And it's, it's, as everyone said, I mean, it's, it's an amazing industry. There's an amazing camaraderie amongst the industry. People are always willing, I mean, a lot of you have said it already, people are willing to share information all the time. People are super friendly. Even if they're not that friendly after a glass of wine, they become more friendly, you know? So it's, it's just, it's, you, you kind of have to like know your customer as well, you know? It's like knowing the person you're going to go see. So it's um, in the industry, if you're looking for advice. But I think it's, it's just, as I said, it's, it's super rewarding, very challenging. I mean, it's not, I think if you, if you want to get into the industry for the wrong reasons, you're going to have a, a, a rude awakening because it's not quite, um, it's not just super easy. It's not just going to happen. Your wines aren't going to sell this themselves. You know, you need to work hard, but, but that applies to any career, you know, whether you're an accountant or someone who holds boats or, or whatever, if, you, if you're not prepared to go the extra mile, you'll never be the top of your game. Um, or good in your field and, and it's just the thing hard there's no substitute for hard work and like Lorraine was saying I mean it's knowledge is power and there has to be a willingness to use that knowledge you know it's you can know everything but if you don't have the the drive and the and the willingness to go and apply that knowledge you know you're dead in the water so it's it's a whole package deal I think which is important so so yeah no it's a, it's a privilege to be part of this industry and it's a privilege to deal with the people that we deal with on a daily basis you know, from the people you work with in the vineyards and the wineries um, to the customers we deal with, um, it's fantastic. Wow. Well, as a journalist, I can say that, I mean, there's always something to write about. This is such an incredible, um, I feel very close to this industry. It's almost like a family. And there's always, as I said earlier, you can always learn more from everybody. And to see, I mean, Lorraine, you like in the hot seat to see how far things have come in, in terms of quality and standards. I mean, all over the world, you can ask the question and people will say South African wines over deliver at price points and uh, people are a little bit afraid of paying a premium price. But if you know what's gone into it and if you understand this whole process of where we've been and how far we've come, 
you'll understand why some African wines can fetch these high prices. So if you have to look at the industry in 10 years from now, where do you think, or how will we be viewed on the world's platform as a wine country? I have a lovely answer for you because it's my life philosophy, um, the question that you've actually just answered. So we spoke about not only learning about wine, but learning about life. And, and Chiara is evident of that. We, we, we're at Alsenberg and you don't only learn about wine. I asked my students over this weekend, Chris Strayer, I know that he's listening. I asked them, what percentage of this year do you think is actually about winemaking? And the collective answer was about 20% because the other 80% is what we spoke about, about life and, and networking and having respect for other people and having a passion for this industry and valuing the networks that we have. I mean, that relationship that Duncan and Cara um, has is going to last for the rest of their lives and they value that and they respect that and they help each other. So that's an example what I'm what I'm referring to. So my philosophy is that if I can stay at Alsenberg and impart that knowledge and that passion and believing in the students for 15 years, and I have an average of 15 students a year, I have 225 students that I've educated over 15 years, which have all got the same quality, the same standard of quality education about winemaking, but also about these life skills and the networking and the respect for the industry. Now that is one quarter of the total industry of South Africa, which is, there's approximately 900 winemakers and wineries. So that's 25%. But as they get older, they become like Kiara now has moved on from assistant winemaker to winemaker. And so she will continue. And she, so she will impart the same beliefs, the same principles, the same standards that she has learned in the wine industry. And she, I know that these guys are paying it forward. So eventually we are transforming from the ground level up, having a more open view about the world of wine and putting South Africa on a map in this way. That's the part that I'm um, contributing to. Then there's another part where the winemakers like Duncan and so many others are really making world-class wines and they are doing their marketing in the rest of the world. And so we are all driving these different sections of the wine industry and moving South Africa forward. And that is exciting. It's super exciting. And Kiara, you just made your first shenan. <laughs> yes. yes. So yes, tell us about it. Is it bottled? <laughs> Is it labeled? So the 2019 vintage was officially my own uh, baby. And um, it is quite exciting and daunting at the same time. You know, it's a, you study and it's kind of like, oh, you want this moment. And then when you get there, it's like, whoa, it's, it's actually very big. It is really, really big. Um, but I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed to have um, so many people, like Duncan, for example, who's there who can help, um, like Charles as well. Call, I can just pick up the phone and, you know, I need this or that. Um, so, yeah, it was quite exciting. Um, yeah, very exciting to make the Shannon. And it's looking very good. I can't even try it. I'm a big Shannon lover myself. It's just like Shannon just wants to do everywhere while everywhere in South Africa. And it's probably one of our calling cards. It's something we really, really do well. Um, and Duncan, if you look at uh, Kihara, what have you learned from her? Because it's quite interesting that you've got all these, I mean, like you're a little bit over, you know, outnumbered by ladies here today. But if you look at the, the general stylistic um, changes in winemaking, do you think the younger generations are going to choose a different style of winemaking? What have you learned from Kiara, or do you think um, they will go the more traditional route? <laughs> no, no, that's why I'm being quite quiet today, because I am quite outnumbered, you know, I've got to watch what I say. But... Um, <laughs> No, listen, you know, the thing is, is that the, the industry, it's like, again, it's like any industry. There's this, there's constantly new people coming in that must challenge the old God. If everyone just did the same thing from one generation to the next and made the same wines, wine would also suck. So, you know, you, you want to be in a position where everyone's constantly challenging, innovating. And, and, and that's what Kiara did. She had a lot of questions. You know, she came from working with people like, like I tell, you know, it's, a lot of us sometimes 
even though we've been in the industry for a while, you, you keep your cards not only not really close to your chest, but you don't, there's certain questions that even, you know, you feel crazy asking someone because, you know, you think, well, maybe I should know that by now. And then, you know, you're having Kiara in the cell, you know, she's worked with guys like David, Carl, Charles. I mean, a guy like Charles is, is, is I mean, Charles is, is amazing. He's, he's always willing to share his knowledge and all of that kind of thing. So you learn from what her experiences were in those different sellers and some things that we've implemented in, in the wineries, you know, that she learned in her time. So I think it's, you always, winemaking is something that you've got an approach with an open mind. You, you've always got to be willing to learn, willing to adjust. Every season is different. You know, the, we just have to look at the last five years in terms of rainfall in the Cape, how we've had to adjust, how we work. I mean, how, you know, things can affect pHs, all that kind of things. The way we prepare soils these days, the way, you know, in the old days, it was very different. People didn't just phone up their local supplier and things got delivered. You know, they made their own compost. They relied on animals on the property. These days, it's become much easier. You, you send an email or you, you make a phone call. So there's a lot of adjustments into, in terms of, of how things are done. How, you know, how do we look to what was done in the past to, to go forward? And I think the wine industry, that's the most, it's, it's super relevant because, you know, it's, we, we think we're relevant in this game um, and you've got one little go at it for a few vintages and then you die and someone else carries on. It's been done for thousands of years, you know, and, and it's, um, there's so much to learn from all the people before us, you know, and the new people coming in. So, yeah. Regardless of age, I mean, what we won't do to, um, to, to create some hype uh, about the wine industry. And I've, I've heard through the grapevine that at some point, Duncan, you slept in a wine tank in the middle of the v and waterfront to raise awareness. What was that about? Well, it was actually to raise money, but um, we raised no money. <laughs> Just basically had drank too much wine every night and met so many cool people. No, but that, that's the kind of thing. I think the industry is, you know, there's a, there's a super fun element to the industry as well. I think sometimes what happens, and, and, and Lorraine mentioned it earlier, people in the industry can often take themselves too seriously. And, and I have mates, you know, I'll go to a bra and, and a mate will say, oh, no, like, well, why don't you bring a bottle of wine? No, no, I knew you were, I knew you were going to be here. And I thought maybe you'd judge me for the wine I brought to something. It's not what it's about. You must drink what you like. And I think, you know, that people, there's, there's such an amazing... There's a serious side to the industry, but there's such a fun side to this industry as well. Like I said, with the camaraderie, we sell something that also makes you feel fantastic. So that also plays, you know, into the whole thing. So we do these like events around the world. We travel, you know, you, you're socializing with clients and, and, and all that kind of thing was great. So that, that story at Elsenburg was, you know, this, it was cooked up by a bunch of mates sitting around a table, you know, doing a wine tasting. And obviously, you know, when you're a student, you don't just taste knowing you're going to drink, drive home. You staying in Elsenburg at, in the Corsa is just like a few steps away. So we drank a bit too much, I have to say. We did that quite a lot, in fact. But um, it was fun and we had a good time and we had this plan of living in a wine tank and we did it for five days. We convinced this guy, one of the tank suppliers, to deliver a tank right next to the old Bourne Johnson shop. Um, it wasn't so pleasant in the day when it was hot, but at night time it was fantastic. And, uh, and we met great people. And, and that was the biggest thing about that is we, we, it wasn't successful from what we initially set out to do in, in raising cash. But where we had success is we met amazing people in the industry. And we, we built up contacts at a very early stage of our career. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure Lorraine, you know, with the students, it's, it's something that I think in the old days you, you went through, you learned about winemaking. And, and, you know, I don't know what all happens there today. And then obviously, but it's changed a hell of a lot is people are realizing that these days it's not about just getting your diploma or your degree. You've got to know how to socialize, as Lorraine said earlier, interact with people, and, and most importantly, sell, because you can make the best wines under the sun. If you can't sell them, because let's be honest, I mean, wine, there's a lot of good wine out there, but a lot of it is around the story around the wine, how you portray that image and, and, and how you sell it. And you know, if you, if you don't have that social interaction, then it's, it can be a, a problem. You need to, and it doesn't have to be living in a bloody wine tank, but I mean, there's many ways to, to get to know cool people and do cool things. Yeah, we had fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Kiara and Kelsey, you the two, you know, ambassadors that's going to have to put the word out there and get young people interested. And uh, one last question, Kelsey. Are young people drinking wine? 
people your age, are they really interested in drinking wine? Um, I definitely think they are. Um, not even just my wine circles of friends that I studied with or people that are, you know, that I've met through industry. Um, I definitely think that young people are interested in drinking wine. They want to know more about wine. And um, I think the hard part is, is the education behind it. And people are so shy to grab a bottle of wine off the shelf or or bring it to a bra, like Duncan's saying, um, because they're like, oh, you know, what are people going to say about this? Does it have to cost more than a hundred rand? You know, um, so I think it's very intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. Um, but I do think there's a growing market uh, with the youngsters and wine, um, because I do, I feel because of probably, you know, the digital era, era and social media, it's becoming more accessible to know more about wine and um, people are making it more inclusive as well. Um, I feel that coming on as an industry that it's becoming more inclusive. So therefore the, the youngsters are booming and they are becoming more interested um, in, in what we're doing. Yeah, it's becoming the cultural elixir for South Africans yeah. and all of us have the responsibility to talk about it wisely and responsibly and, and get people excited on international levels. But thank you so much for, for all of you taking the time and everybody that listened today. I want everybody to know that there's an open door and if there's any questions to the Guild, to any of these wonderful young people here, that we are here to, to answer your questions. And we are all in this together to make South Africa just stay there on top. We're, you know, with the best wines in this world. And uh, on that topic, next week we're going to talk about we're going to have industry um, leaders coming together talking about wine as an investment, which might be very interesting if you're thinking about buying wine and want to enter that market. And then just before the auction, we're also going to talk to some generations in the guild and talk about how winemaking progressed and changed through all this uh, um, generation. So yes, uh, extremely dynamic topic, dynamic individuals in this industry. So thank you so much and thank you to every, the role that each of you play and uh, for being such wonderful stalwarts. Thank you very much to all the listeners and I hope you sign up for the next one and don't forget to tune in for the first live auction on the 3rd of October. We are super excited. Thank you, somebody. Thank, thank you. Sorry. Cheers, guys. Bye.